So since filming that wash day routine, this is the current, this is where we're at, Lynch. <laughs> I'm kidding, this is, this is, that's not, it's not me. Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. I am Jack or JC if you have been a long time subscriber here. And if not, welcome. You good? Hey, <laughs> all right. Let's jump right in. I have my notes and my glasses because I'm in business. Okay. I'm walking step by step through my wash day routine, which I do once every three weeks with examples. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's get into the products. Everyone wants to know about the products. Now for me, the type of products that I use are not the main thing. And I think that's the way it should be. As long as you find products that work for you, it doesn't matter the price point. I haven't found that super expensive products have made my hair look any better or any worse, especially products that are on, that go into your wash day routine and not styling products. So for my wash day routine products, you're gonna see brands like VO5, very cheap and cheerful, might I add. Um, you're going to see Trader Joe's Tea Tree Tingle. I have Eden Body Works in there. And I have alternatives for my Eden Body Works product, but that's the one that I've been using more and more lately. What is really important though when it comes to the products is the mixture that I use. Now this mixture I have been using every single time that I wash my hair these days. So that has been going on for the last three months, I would say. So there was a period of time when I would do it very periodically, sporadically, whenever I felt like it. Now I've incorporated it every single time. And I think I'm just gonna continue doing that because the mask is really, really good. So with this, it's an Ayurvedic mask. I'll say some of the powders that are in it. You already know, <laughs> I'm the powder. I love Indian gooseberry, the great goose, okay. So Amla powder is in there. We have Brahmi, we have Shakai Kai, um, and those are pretty much the main ones. And then I like to use aloe water, aloe vera water, just so I could get some of the nutrition that comes with aloe vera without necessarily having the mess of the plant. So I love adding the mask because of all the properties that these Ayurvedic powders have. They're filled with nutrition. They're filled with things that I really do want my hair to get. And I decided why not have my hair get these nutrition these these vitamins more than just once every time i feel like it why don't i try and get it in there once a month essentially every wash day i have noticed that it helps a lot with growth it helps a lot with growth because i try to get some on my scalp it also helps a lot with the fullness and the density that my hair feels and this was very important to me because i was on a trimming journey trying to get rid of thinner ends um and you could probably see it actually if you look in this video you can see that the top of my hair is a lot thicker at least to me than the bottom so when you're on a trin trimming journey and you want to retain length it's very important that whatever products you're using are helping with growth activating the hair growth my hair is 4b4c and i know people are getting away from the hair typing system and i also understand that just because your hair is the same type as mine doesn't mean it's going to act or behave the same way but I do think that most 4B4C gellies can relate to the fact that your hair will never be fully detangled. It will never be completely detangled. So when I detangle my hair, I can get through it, I can run my fingers through it or the comb through it, but in like 2.3 seconds, it almost feels like, it's definitely not as tangled as it was when you first started out, but it's just not as detangled as what it just was a moment ago. That's just the way my hair is because of the shrinkage, because of the coil pattern. It can never be fully, fully, fully detangled. So working in sections for me helps lessen the risk of having a bigger mess, a bigger tangle um, in more sections of my hair. And with my hair routine, detangling as little as possible is the aim. It's what I'm going for. So when I wash my hair in sections, it lessens the amount of times that I have to detangle. And when I detangle in each section, I go through each with the products, make sure I get my Ayurvedic mud mask in there and rake my fingers through to distribute the product as evenly as possible and as generously as possible, might I add. Gloves. So I do wear gloves in my wash day routine now. I didn't used to, I believe this had to have started like a year or two ago and I've had natural hair and been taking care of my natural hair for a very, very long time. So it took some getting used to adding gloves into the routine, but I love them now. I can't imagine not doing my hair with gloves. So one, with using gloves, I don't wanna mess up my nails. But two, and the more important thing is the fact that I finger detangle. 
if you are using a comb or a brush gloves will probably be unnecessary because it's not your fingers getting through your hair for me i do finger detangle so i want to go into why i finger detangle because it is it is a labor of love my dear it's definitely a labor of love it takes way longer when you finger detangle especially my hair type than it would if you just use some sort of comb or some sort of wet brush so first i want to talk about the benefits if you are interested in definition in curl pattern and all of that then finger detangling probably will be for you now i went through years and years and years of my hair journey before i started finger detangling where i was using wide tooth combs and once i started finger detangling and my hair got used to it the natural clumping that occurred i was able to actually see a curl pattern now i know that 4b4c has a curl pattern and i've always known that i just wasn't really seeing it back when i was brushing or back when I was combing my hair rather and it didn't matter to me because I'm not a big definition girly you know I don't use all the gels I don't really care in fact for my hair to be defined in fact I quite like it the opposite when it's frizzy it just looks bigger and bigger hair is more important to me than defined hair but I know I am in the minority greatly in the minority more people do care about definition showing off the curls creating curls whatever so if that is what you're interested in finger detangling is definitely a benefit there's natural clumping that occurs because the comb isn't disturbing the hair pattern um, and making all the the very small small coils that you have especially with 4b4c hair go in all different directions two less breakage because you're running your fingers through it and your fingers have nerve endings i hope <laughs> i hope so okay i hope they have nerve endings you're able to feel when there is a tangle unlike a comb when you're raking through your hair and you feel a tangle the the easy thing to do is just to keep raking through it and not to take your time and actually go through the knot with your fingers it is very hard it is very hard to have your fingers in your hair feel a knot and just keep ripping one because you're gonna feel your, it on your scalp you're gonna feel yourself pulling out your hair okay and it's not a pretty sight so most people would not do that what you will do instead and what i found that i do instead is i locate that knot with my finger as i'm trying to rake through and then instead of continuing to rake through i take my hand out the raking stops and i go to the knot and just separate all the hairs so i have noticed less breakage for sure also be okay with the fact that running your fingers through your hair by the end of your finger to tangle is not really practical with my hair type it, there it's very rare that i get like that I stop my detangle when I'm able to like just rake my hair and I've seen other people do this with different curl patterns um some of the three curl patterns and maybe even 4a they're able to get it to a point where they're just raking products through their hair with 4b 4c hair that never there's never a time when I get through a section I'm able to just rake my fingers through it and that's okay because for my hair I know what detangled is and what good enough detangled is that I'm not overdoing it and therefore causing breakage trying to get my hair to a state of detangle that it doesn't really need to be in. So I like to use two fingers. I like to go in with two fingers to locate a knot and separate. I like to use a thumb sometimes to push through, press through, find a knot, locate that knot and then separate. I like to also just start separating my hair in different sections in two. This is how I finger detangle. I think when people hear finger detangle, they think the whole time you're raking your fingers through your hair and it just should be easy. No, if that's the way you approach finger detangling and you think that's the way it's going to go, of course, you're going to have a very difficult time with it and you're not going to enjoy it or think that your hair is detangled. But if you employ different methods, as you will learn, the more you do it, you figure out ways that your hair works best. So I don't just start off when I first start detangling a section with immediately running my fingers. No, I start with taking the section and dividing it in two multiple times in different places, almost like shuffling a deck. Like I'm dividing, 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 and that is pulling apart some of the more big, obvious tangles. Then I go in with the thumb and that's getting into the nooks and the crannies and it's getting more of the specific smaller tangles and I locate those and separate it and then you can go in with two fingers now because now you're getting into the detangling raking side and you can also feel and locate and separate until eventually you get into the raking as much as you can within reason let's be reasonable and then you are detangled also slip is important the products that you use for this I know I said the brand isn't important and that is true but the slip and the way it reacts to your hair. The slip in it for your hair is important, highly important. Now we're in the shower, so come on into the shower with me. So when I'm in the shower, 
I'm again working in sections and I am mainly focused on targeting my scalp. So the product that I like to use, I like co-wash conditioners. I have just found that co-wash conditioners strip my hair less. I like a co-wash conditioner that slightly suds up, slightly foams up, but it is not a shampoo. So what I like to use is the As I Am Coconut Co-wash Conditioner. If you have been a long time subscriber here, you already know, you already know. Love that stuff. Well, I go in with a very generous amount and the pads of my fingers and really just get into the scalp. I wash my hair again once every three weeks and in those weeks I am using my hair growth oil. If you are interested in a hair growth oil that works, honey, okay, look, look at the hair. You see it? Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you're interested in hair growth oil, that's going to be linked below. So I use my hair growth oil every week, two to three times a week and I wash my hair every three weeks. So you can imagine there is going to be some build up that happens, naturally occurs. I also work out, I'm a pretty active person. I live in New York, there's smog, there is smut, whatever is here. Whatever the world can have, we have it here. So you have to wash your scalp. I'm focused very much so on my scalp and I'm using a generous amount. What I also do is untwist my hair. So once I'm finished getting the scalp or targeting the scalp in that area, I untwist each twist so that I can properly wash out the mainly the Ayurvedic mud mask that I do. I have found that if you keep your hair twisted and try and just squeeze water through, you'll find a lot of dust in your hair when your hair dries. When you're trying to twist your hair or style your hair, you're gonna see a whole bunch of particles and dust because it really wasn't rinsed down. So ever since doing this, like opening the twist, actually allowing water to, to fall down, I don't go in with any extra co-wash conditioner, not for me, I add Shikai Kai into my mixture, which if you look up the properties of Shikai Kai, one of the things is that it's a natural shampooing or cleansing agent. So that for me is enough. I don't really focus on cleaning the length of my hair. But yes, I use that, the water, underneath the water to rinse all of that product out and then twist it back up. The green tea rinse. Love a green tea rinse. So for me, I prep my green tea before I even head into the shower. So when I'm doing my hair outside, detangling my hair outside the shower, I already have the green tea boiled and just sitting in the shower. So by the time I get into the shower, obviously the tea is cold and it's fine because I have a small amount and I just use the water from the shower to fill it up to get it back warm again. And I pour that on my hair, literally just drench my hair. I'm focused more on the scalp than I am the length of the hair because green tea has very small, very small bits of caffeine, but that caffeine blocks the DHT hormones in the hair that do cause hair shedding. Um, I discovered this for a way to minimize shedding when I was going through a very, very bad shedding spell because of iron and um, vitamin deficiencies. So I discovered this and it really did help. And um, I know that a lot of postpartum mothers use it because it does help with postpartum shedding. So love the green tea rinse you could use a black tea as well i just found that the black tea was a bit strong like when i used it it just made my hair feel like straw but the green tea was just the perfect amount so my hair no longer i no longer go through all of that shedding that i was before but ever since then i have not stopped so i have been doing this for years i buy a very cheap and cheerful green tea from whatever dollar store family dollar dollar tree dollar general they have these packs of like 50. buy one use one tea bag each wash day easy peasy so now we come to the after wash care now i know this isn't technically wash day it's not technically a part of the wash but it is a part of the wash day so i'm gonna add it and i don't really do anything too crazy so when i get out of the shower the clumping that happens because of the the finger detangling and that mud mask mud masks in general really do define your hair so you can see that there's already some natural definition there it looks all lush and shiny but I still need to go in with my aftercare my products that are going to moisturize my hair so the products that I like to use I like to use a leave-in conditioner whichever one you have should work I like to use a hair cream and then I like to use a sealant using my hair growth oil those are the three things that I use and I use very generous amount I like to do I also like to do this when my hair is very damp so I keep a spray bottle handy because that is important to me and once I get the product through generous amount again I used to be less heavy-handed and then I discovered that the heavy-handed 
ness is, is just best for me because my hair does get dry and I can sometimes keep my hair in these six sections which I still work in the six sections even in this after care part I can keep my hair in the six sections to dry for two three four days however many I need to depending on the busyness busyness of my schedule and when I have time to put it into the smaller two strand twists so it's just better for me to over moisturize so that if I end up carrying these larger chunky twists for a longer period of time <laughs> they don't dry out so then i use this time to detangle and also get my hair moisturized so this is the second detangle of my current wash day routine and once i'm done detangling as much as i can i then twist up each section and that's pretty much it that is my wash day routine in a nutshell i hope i was able to get everything into this video as concise as possible okay Filming your wash day is not that easy, okay? It's not that easy because it's a very long process. So I had to figure out what sections I wanted to film and what sections do I think are necessary. So hopefully you're able to gain something from this. I've just found that in order to grow hair, all the parts of your routine are important. And for me, the wash day is very important as well. I try to minimize the amount of breakage and damage that I cause on that day by detangling as little as possible and keeping everything detangled together and nice and neat you know and that is where the twists come in i do understand that some people are just able to wash all at once and that is lovely that is very lovely but that's not um, something that i found that works for my hair especially with all the shrinkage and stuff that it has and the fact that i don't wear my hair out it just doesn't really make any sense for my lifestyle um and you also notice i do not use any towels i air dry I drip dry that is my preference um, I don't think there's anything wrong with using a blow dryer or a hooded dryer if you want to I just don't need to I don't have any rush now I can imagine if my life gets to the point where I cannot have wet hair for a day or two then I would have no problem doing that so that is just a personal preference and also a lifestyle preference but yeah that is it that is all I'm curious to know what your wash day routines are or certain steps that you add especially to promote hair growth um, especially to stop shedding if you do tea rinses I'm always very curious about that so that's it that's all make sure you like comment and subscribe I do have Instagram if you are so inclined to go check that out as well as TikTok, where I drop little videos here and there about hair tips that you can have fashion lifestyle all the things all the things I've got it you get me anyway Take care and I'll see you in my next one. Bye! Mwah.